Gamers and gentle gamers, welcome once again to the greatest institute of magical learning in the Four Kingdoms, IOP Academy. I'm tormented by gnomes. I'll be your game master and your host as we continue our adventures here with Crowen, Leg Day, and Lemon Kiwi. Crowen, what's going on? How you be? I be good. Just been uh, doing some TFT prep. Mm -hmm. Lemon and I casting Woo! TFT Crypto Cup this weekend. Make sure to check that one out. It's going to be a banger. But uh, no. yeah. Just, someone drop uh, that more, in, uh, more D &D now. Someone drop that in promotion and in the Discord at some point, so everyone has links Ooh. to that. Leg day, what's new True. with you? Uh, I am. I appear to be sending a remarkably low bit rate to mm -hmm. the stream, and aside from that, I lost a lot on Overwatch today, so I'm ready to pick up even more L's as we continue to go up <laughs> against BBE Jesus, ten year old. BBE Jesus. <laughs> How would I not heard BBE Jesus? Who would before? win? A literal god or four ten-year-olds? <laughs> eh, well, the track record so far, not so great for me. <laughs> Lemon Kiwi, what's going on? How are you? Good. Welcome back. Fresh water, fresh tan, and sunburn. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. And sober for the first time. <laughs> I'm not sure if Let's Go. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know what we do on cruises. We be cruising, so we we do uh, be cruising. But it helped me drum up some really good ideas for the episode. <laughs> let's go. Let's good go. Creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of Lemon's good ideas. We're gonna be we cooking. Extra, extra strength <laughs> air quotes picking. for this one. <laughs> Turn off the stove. <laughs> My stove. Oh, I forgot we had a weird episode arc where Garnet became an oven repair woman. That, oh, oh my God! god. Poor memory unlocked of like what two months ago. I don't even know at this point. Okay. <clears throat> when last we left our heroes, a whole lot of stuff was going on. Alexander learns that Garnet had killed his childhood friend Naomi and sent a threatening message after Despair's Herald infiltrated Garnet's dream and extracted that information. He seemed to be after even more secrets about what had happened in their battle at the Silent City, but whether he got what he wanted or not remains unknown at this time. Athelor has sent a letter home to his father, trying to persuade him not to withdraw Athelor from Ioth Academy. For although it's true the students have been imperiled many, many times this year alone, Athelor and his friends fear that the entire plot is actually to reunite Athelor with his uncle, Lamriel Andarud, who may or may not be the, a uh, envoy of the One Flesh, a eldritch abomination heading towards Anakra even as we speak. Mason discussed with the Dokelfar sage the possibility of returning to his homeland, long since ransacked by Vindor and the Knights of Terranimbus, in order to read the dreams of the crystalline cave where he first had an odd encounter with a magical mirror, an encounter that has lingered and haunted him ever since. But before our heroes could enact any of these schemes, Sventisco, Mason's girlfriend and the leader of the Kizjon, approached them asking for help. Her supposed mentor, Kephesk, who's a leader of a dragon tribe subversive group inside the refugee camp, tried to kill Garnet's mother. And Sventisco wants to bring her group, the Kizjon, into the refugee settlement every week to hand out supplies and administer humanitarian aid to those present. But she fears that if Kephesk truly has disastrous designs up to and including opening the seven gates of the silent city and unleashing the seven dragons of the world before upon the land, then he can't be trusted and the safety of the Kizjan may be at stake. Our heroes agreed to help spy on Kapesk, and when we last left them, they were on a flying carpet floating near the outer edges of the golden sphere of Ioth Academy. Garnet's familiar, Una, had snuck into the cellar where the faithful, the group that Kapesk leads, has their secret meetings. Spying on Kepesk as everyone else left the area, they discovered a shocking truth. Kepesk is a mirror clone. And that is where we last left our heroes. Any questions? Anybody need anything from me before we get right back into it? You forgot that. Da, da, da. I don't have the soundboard hooked up properly for that at the moment. I apologize. Oh. I, I've only got poor laughing audience. 
I hate it. I used the sitcom uh, <laughs> soundboard in a work meeting recently. I don't think I'm getting a promotion. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I was in a work, an actual like client meeting today, and when I started talking, everyone started laughing because apparently one of my voice mods was on, and uh, I did not feel smart. Oh, an acronym turning up to the uh, the old work meeting, guy. <laughs> Yeah, Behold, exactly. An idea. <laughs> <laughs> the project management is inexorable. Yep. So our heroes sit upon the flying carpet. Garnet looks through Una's eyes as she sees Kapesk interfacing with a mirror. Fingers touching it, dripping across it as if it's made of liquid silver, revealing the fact that Kapesk is in fact a mirror clone and using a sending stone to send a message to an unknown communicant. That is where we left off. What do our heroes do in response to this? Hold X to continue spying. <laughs> is was that the end of the thing or, or like end of like that interaction or is there like more that is well, happening there, with Kepesk? There's probably more, but unless I am mistaken, Garnet is tapped into Univision and has to relay all of this to the rest of the party, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. Sven's not there, right? Sventisco is... Or is she? I don't remember. I think, I think she was with you. Yeah, I think she was with you. It yeah. makes most we sense. We just like, didn't for... tell her about oh, okay. the possible human bait, which we didn't end up going with anyway. That was right. the only part she was in the dark about. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we left her out of the evil part. Ah, evil shmeevil. <laughs> <laughs> I it's just think as soon as... Sort of thing. As soon as Garnet realized that, like, basically, Kepesk is a mirror clone, uh, Mason would just look at Sven and imagine kind of like lock eyes and just, probably just like wait for Sventisco's reaction, see if she has anything to say about it. You do not first. require an insight check to realize that Sventisco is freaking out. Yeah. Oh, understood. I'll just <laughs> head and hands a little bit. It's like, oh, oh no, mm -hmm. that's this is this is bad. Out of character question: yes. How important is Kapesk again? Kapesk nope, is. <laughs> oh. Kapesk right. is the leader of a group. You know how the kids John's whole thing is: Hey, IOP Academy isn't doing enough to help the world. Yeah. Kapesk's group outside the academy is kind of what, in some part, gave Sventisco those ideas. Or rather, Sventisco had those ideas, but she was inspired to start towards activism and stuff by meeting Kapesk and his group. They consist of Dragon Tribe Faithful, who act in secret throughout the refugee camp and, as according to Sventisco, beyond. Standing up against the Infernals through acts of covert, uh, not sabotage, and up until recently, assassination, if they were doing assassinations and terrorism and stuff, she didn't know about it, but she did know that they were helping people who were being uh, pushed out of their homes by the Bronthans looking for infernal influence and plotting to steal things from the Academy. You remember that raid on Utramala's office in year four? Kepesk oh, yeah. put Sventisco up to that and supplied her with all the magic items needed to break into Untermaller's office. So he's been on the outside helping her infiltrate and steal things in the academy. And obviously, like, that whole tribe does not want the dragons freed originally, but now... Nobody apparently wants, like, as far as you know, nobody wants the dragons free, except for a couple of individuals you're familiar with. But the seven dragons of the world before aren't a major part, religion checks, actually. I will take religion checks on this one. Oh, okay. And all around or just garnet? I'll give you a religion check. All around, but Montra, <laughs> Montra can have advantage on this because like, he was raised in this stuff. Cool. Okay, 10 from Garnet. Hey, I got it, buddy. from Leg Day. Hey, from Adelor, 10 and an 18 Average. from Montra. So, okay. as far as you know, none of the dragon tribes actually worship or communicate with or venerate the seven dragons of the world before it's an extremely small mystery religion that exists in in bits and places they keep very much to themselves they only initiate those who kind of buy into their whole philosophy they operate very surreptitiously they keep their teachings secret but there's no large-scale movement that wants to open the seven gates of the silent city 
Well, uh, look at it this way. It, your faith wasn't misplaced. Kepesk, originally, not as much of a dickbag. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now, what you can do is you can try and take away the power base a little bit more easily. If you could just get, like, the Sage's Lantern and show this anti-infernal organization that Kepesk is a miracle and his, their influence will evaporate. And that power base could be broken down quite quickly. That's not what I'm worried about, Athelor. He's seen us. He knows so many of the kids, John. Can he get inside the academy? How do I mean, you get inside in and out? He, he gave me a, a blade that I used to, to part through, go back and forth. If he has that, and he's one of them, and he knows who all of my people are, we got to kill we him. Need, yeah, we need to get rid of him, yes. We, we, we got to kill him. I thought looks over to Garnet, thinking, I think this is the first time you haven't been the first to suggest this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was uh, thinking, y'all just said it first. <laughs> I was like, y'all just said it first. I was already on board once he started shining. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> okay, killing it is. Yeah. Oh, and then at DM that point, check. Oh, sorry, okay. go ahead. Who are you? I was going to say, uh, at that point, <laughs> then, we can see if we can you know, transfer control of, of, was it the Faithless, right? The Faithful. The Faithful. That makes more sense. The Faithful. <laughs> the Faithful to somebody else. And we can keep going. But I think the big thing is why the Infernals, why are they targeting Kepask? And why are they targeting the Faithful? Did they do anything important in terms of opposing the Infernals? They tried to assassinate Bron on its mom and it would be reasonable to expect that it was actually them who did that yes if he's one of them that's the whole reason why the iron empire showed up they were all in on it together uh, i meant why they would replace kepesk in particular it's feasible that the faithful would be the ones to try that assassination uh, if he if he can order that He's got both those slayers that will answer his beck and call. Look, people are not supposed to know about those. It's, it's not common knowledge that the sacred order of my tribe in specific is holy killers. But he knew, and he knew how to get into contact with them. So obviously, if the Infernals could control him to kill mm. off somebody important and make this yeah. whole crisis between the two sides even worse uh, okay we know that he's a clone now and things while they are very dire make a lot more sense at least so some comfort in that now we have to devise a plan to get rid of him which will be tough now. Well, I'm sorry, Mantra. We do have the perfect bait. We do? Athlaw looks over to Sventisco. What, lure him out? I mean... I mean, yes. Yes, that could work. Or perhaps lure him into the academy. Have you ever met him inside there? You you still have the hideout in the Undercroft, right? Where we fought yeah. the Redcaps? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's sort of... We had to move on from that one. People sort of know about it too much. But we still can go. We can still come and go. With the whole fairy tree down, being down there, it makes it more complicated. Couldn't we just go tell El now and drop in well, on have him? The refugees, have the refugee city get visited by bunch of wardens again i was thinking something smaller is there another leader besides kapesk like a vice yeah. president i don't lieutenant i don't know <laughs> i i don't even know if he's actually in charge i don't know how far it goes they've always been very careful to keep information compartmentalized in case somebody was captured interrogated had their mind read etc i don't know how far kapesk's influence goes 
Sven, I didn't anticipate you being the one to suggest going to El now about it. Uh, we have to do, I mean... Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm with you. I just didn't expect you to be the one to say it. We have to That's be fine. 100% certain. And uh, mm -hmm. she looks at all of you. I've seen... Compared to what we've stood against together, this is a problem that needs to be solved very, very quickly, and that seems like the fastest way to do it. How do we not know that the person Kapaska is talking to slash everyone under Kapaska is not also mirror clones? Because if he, the leader, is getting mirror cloned, why not everyone else? Well, we know from what they've mirror cloned already, they usually target very specific people, right? Even within the academy, they only targeted a few once they knew that they can get to and it would have the most impact, right? They generally don't go widespread on it. But that but was... Also, also threw a giant mirror under us and tried to get all of us at once at one time, but mm, I don't true. know if they had the capacity to prep that in the refugees. I, I suppose it's a balancing act where the more mirror clones you create, the larger the chance that someone gets detected and then mm -hmm. suspicion is aroused upon everybody. Yeah. But also, they could all be mirror clones and we'll have to take the sage of us, of course, with the lantern so that anyone who is not who we believe them to be is instantly identified and mm -hmm. and Athol kind of like gestures the gun and destroyed. Oh, maybe oh, and... we don't want to have the lantern out or something too soon, then the alarm would be raised and then Mirror clone Kepes could then escape or something. That would be at the right moment. That's why um, I thought bringing DM... him to us. Yeah. DM Go question. Um, mm -hmm. Stats wise, do mirror clones have the same stats as their original? Identical stats. Like HP as well? Or mm -hmm. are they kind of more fragile? Nope. Level, stats, every single thing is Can identical. Can you cause a crack? Like if you were to injure a mirror clone, would you see maybe a crack in the yeah. mirrorness? Only Have when they die. If they're vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. Oh. They are usually vulnerable to thunder damage. No, no. The Nera are vulnerable to thunder damage. The Mirror Clone is actually flesh and blood, but they have this um. metaphysical nature that is mirror. So it, it's revealed by very, very powerful magic. And when they die, they shatter. But other than that, they actually... Because they can die of all the same things the original can die of, right? If you were actually made of solid glass, you could probably survive being submerged. But if Mirror Kapesk can't breathe water, or if original Kapesk can't breathe water, Mirror Kapesk will drown as well. The only difference is when he dies, his true metaphysical nature will be revealed and he'll shatter into glass. Uh, you guys have a jam. We're drowning in refugee city. Let's go. <laughs> Tidal wave. So one thing I can think of is that I can deliver touch spells within a, being 100 feet um, from mm -hmm. my familiar and identify as technically a touch spell and mm -hmm. you have to do like a dm check if i could do like the ritual sort of before and when it's ready then i could have una touch mm. someone to identify if they're a miracle you have to be in contact with the thing analyzing it for the entire casting time so una would have to be on them during the whole ritual correct but you can cast that using a spell slot instantly right uh, it's the spell even with a spell slot the cast time is one minute oh um which could be possible if we want a chance doing stealth rolls with a spider. Because mm -hmm. do you really feel a spider? I don't know, but <laughs> there's that. You're just, just a spider holding your hand. Hey. <laughs> well, we got to see if Una turns into like a giant spider, which is as big as a dinner plate or like a saucer or a literal spider. Like a little baby one. I don't know. It just says spider form. I don't know what the size is. Let's take a look. Emphasis on the spy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, baby one. Just do a spider. A, it just says a spider. So very helpful. Know, like no, I, I mean like a you know. spiders are small unless they're from Australia, right? <laughs> it doesn't say Australian spider, so I'm gonna say it's itty bitty teeny tiny has one hit like the normal spider has one hit point. So yes, we're talking about a literal spider. So it was like that uh, would it would take a while to just go from person to person, identify, identify, but it would be the most like stealthy way without us mm -hmm. leaving the academy situation. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like dispel magic that would reveal a mirror clone because they're nope. not. Mm. Even like they're not illusions. They actually are that person. Just like chat said, their reflection or reflected version of them. 
it takes very powerful divination magic to reveal their true nature. The only reason he's revealed in this case is because he's doing something with that mirror. Hmm. Yeah. I don't feel great about... Uh, yeah, I love the idea of baiting him into the academy because that's where the safest, but how do we get him here? We don't. We just wait until he's alone, scry on him, Untramaller teleports in, disintegrates him, teleports out. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. Easy on paper. That's what I hate about it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe for once, some things can just be easy. I, I mean, I, I just after what happened in the underworld, I don't want to fight entities serving the Mirror Keeper in a place where they could have set up traps again. Reasonable. Although, I suppose, actually, I don't know. I was going to say, in this case, we would definitely have the drop on them. They don't know that we'd know, but Mirror Keeper showed me the initial thing, so I don't know whether to trust that or not. I mean, we've seen this because he's communed with one of these mirrors, so you've got to assume that they're around. Yeah. Just to keep their master appraised. Uh, yeah, I can deliver a pretty like, damagey spell at 100 feet through Una, but I don't know if it would be enough damage to cause any effect, unless exhaustion has a special effect against mirror clones, but... Nope. Just the normal effects. And I How know... How much HP does Kapaskav do? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty powerful sorcerer. Yeah. He's... <laughs> I mean, he couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of our of any of the the masters, but he's definitely got more powerful magic than us. So out of character, he has more hit points than any, any of you, any one of you. I can tell you that much. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. <laughs> so he has at least three hit points. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Minimum three. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if they want to use Una as like a teleport beacon... And just pop in and out, kill them, but mm -hmm. sending someone alone is also sketch. So we send a, a, a group, you know, just drop in, wipe them out, escape. I think the first part of this plan then has to be go tell El now, or the Sage, or both, right? To do so, you'll either need to cast a sending spell or move too far away to remain in contact with Una, which will then break your connection. Mm. I feel like they already have so much to worry about, but it's going to be hard to kill them without them. Yeah, and the whole fact of the matter is that is access to the academy and stuff. It's just, it's an active threat. But at least it it's one that be should with. be fast. I mean, it's be faster yeah. than finding the book, right? It's something we can deal with immediately. Something that can be done right, that can be done quickly. That's Francisco. When's the next relief mission scheduled? There isn't one yet. I had to get this done first. Is there good. any other Kapask allies that are in the area that we should check out or just do more snooping? Should we do more snooping before we drop in on his ass or? I mean, we can. We, we know where his hideout is. We've overheard some of his conversations already. If we keep spying, we could learn. We could definitely learn more. Um, but who? But we know enough to vaporize him right now. I guess even if we vaporize him, I, I guess the potential of others being mirror cloned is still there. So maybe mm -hmm. just a quick little spy on some other members of the faithful perhaps as well people that Kepes maybe regularly uh talks to this is the only information with this is the only place i know about nobody really talked with mm. me that much aside from Kepesk. but you've got una there so we could learn more that way 
Yeah. And we still need to know who that contact was that he was talking to. Yes. Yeah. Which I imagine but is someone out of the city because I'm sure they would have just would rather go meet them in person. Mm-hmm. So what Ascending- are the likelihoods that Kapeska is talking to someone outside the city? I mean, pretty good. Ascending stone could, what is sending? Work, it works across planes, right? It, work, it can work between the four kingdoms. So whoever yeah, Kapeska likely. is talking to could be anywhere. Yeah, maybe, maybe even Matt. Alex. It could be Alex. Mm-hmm. Maybe. If it's not, and they aren't under some sort of protection spell, then divination magic might be able to tell us who they're talking to. I don't know if it's anything we could cast, but maybe it's something, it's certainly something you don't need Red Knob for, I think. Uh, another DM question. Mm-hmm. What's the long and short of this Red Knob's uh, orb we were given? It's a crystal ball. It lets you cast Scrying at will. Oh, Pog. It requires attunement? It might require attunement. Okay, so... It does require two Completely out of options. hmm So if you look it up in the compendium, you'll see it casts a scrying spell. It does require attunement, so whoever uses it, you need to take a short rest to attune to it, and you can only attune to up to three items at a time. So if you're over your limit, you'll have to disconnect from one of them. Scrying is also not foolproof. Obviously, a divination shroud blocks it, and there are other things that can block it, and it's a lot easier if you have a piece or something... It's just a crystal ball of true seeing. Oh, it is not a wait, crystal ball of true, true seeing. It's just a normal but, crystal ball. What stat would it use or non-mechanically? Is it mind, spirit? I don't fucking know how to ask this, but... <laughs> no, look, it's in the scrying spell. They make a wisdom oh. saving throw. The wisdom saving throw is modified by how well you know the target. So if you've only heard of them, it's harder for you to scry on them. If you know them really well, it's easier. And if you have a physical connection to it. So if you have like a picture of them, it's a little easier. If you have something that belongs to them, it's minus four on their save. If you have a piece of them, it's minus 10, which is why the teachers are setting up a modified scrying spell that is linked to Quan's hand that will go off what? whenever he deploys. Whenever he leaves the shroud, they're gonna detect him. We could find a surely uh, Kebeska's for scrying spell work if you had a piece of them but they're a mirror clone does that count as them being the same entity uh we, we don't know when he was we don't know when he was replaced that's the other problem we don't know how long he's been replaced if i if we have a piece of him oh, i don't know all this mirror stuff i mean i think as long as whatever we have is a piece of whoever that is then it would work but i definitely have things he's given me still I mean, half well, of the equipment we used for the Untermaler raid was given to him by a, us by him. How long has it been in game since uh, Mantra saw the thing in the mirror about Kepesk? Two days, <laughs> three. Oh shit! Really? Oh. <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, it's been a very long weekend. <laughs> this one weekend of in-game time has been the attempted assassination. Uh, fighting Merrick and fighting Alex and the mirror trap. So really, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm tired, okay. man. <laughs> it's been a long week. Mm-hmm. I guess we have two big options for the scrying orb. Mm-hmm. If we care more about scrying Alex, I feel like like I would be the better attunement person. But if we want to scry Kepask, then maybe Mason would be better. Mm-hmm. In terms of like mechanics, I have a plus six on wisdom saves. So the, um, the, the target has to save wisdom. Oh, I thought it was me. Okay, no, the mind. target has to save wisdom. And remember, Alex is going to be unscryable until he leaves, unless he leaves the shrouding effect, oh, which is oh. definitely inside the Dark Academy is totally blocked. Teleportation and divination. Then... Okay, so I suppose familiarity with Kebesk will take priority this time. I don't yeah. know. I trust, I'm I'd like messaging, <laughs> messaging Mason more about it, but definitely trust Mason with the orb more than Sventisco. 
Not that I don't trust her, it's just an important item that we need to keep very close to us. Mm hmm We... yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. What kind of knife did you have that could cut through dawn energy? Same one you had. <laughs> oh, it wasn't quite the same caliber. <laughs> it didn't it didn't cut it so much as it just sort of like parted it. Do we have means right now to like send one person to like go back and the rest of us like stay and keep the scry going? You currently have one flying carpet. Hmm. Any fly spells? <laughs> Not I. Any artificers want to trade a ring of feather fall for an actual <laughs> ring of flying? <laughs> trade offer. Tradesies? <laughs> mm -hmm. no, so I don't, we're flying right now? Yeah, you're on a flying carpet because you have to stay close to the outer sphere in order to be within the one mile range that allows you to use Univision. Is there a tree nearby we can just... Not inside the academy. Hmm. Damn, they gotta get some topiaries up in this bitch. <laughs> uh, Sventisco, uh... make sure you bring that knife if you come with us to confront Alex. All right. Ah, oh, wait, ring of feather fall. I'm gonna just somebody jump off, take the ring, just fall real nice, and it has to, if you want to acquire a German. Uh, is it? Probably, which means that you'd have to jump off and land in the, the muck <laughs> of the Undercroft in order to Does keep it going. Does every ring need a two ring? Not every ring. It, it varies item by item. Wait, let me look it up. Oh, God. Too much Requires reading. Requires attunement. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like reading? Ah! Do you like math? Well, then Dungeons & Dragons is perfect for you. <laughs> The old item shuffle. Boo. Wait, you have a familiar too. Silly. Go send, your bird. Go send your little birdie to L now. I'd, I'd or whatever you have. Change its form to something that can fly, but yes. Great. Oh. Okay. Uh, Athelor <laughs> rustles around in his bag and um, grabs a few sticks of incense. This will take like 10 minutes. What about yeah, I, I, I know. You, you like, I'll change you back after you've gone to see El, El now. Don't imagine El now is within 120 feet, right? Correct. He's like half a mile away at the spire. Never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Athelor goes silent as he's uh, holding the incense as it burns, just doing the ritual to change the form of the familiar to uh mm. The one that's slightly more airborne. I mean, that's going to be 10 minutes from now. What are you going to do until then? Imagine those noises continuing just the entire time. <laughs> I'm not going to do them, but just use your imaginations. We just keep listening in, I guess, to see what okay. he's up to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now you only hear half the conversation. Whoever he's talking to who is in the mirror their words aren't carrying over to you. Any lip readers? <laughs> uh, roll a perception check, please. And God. you know, third edition had specific rules for lip reading. Really? Yeah, it did. Mm. Give me a All right. Uh, <laughs> a 13. Okay. You do see what the person looks like. I don't remember if you ever saw them. The Nera, right? They're these completely silver, like, mirror-bodied people. This one is particularly tall and wears black robes with an inner lining of red and has its hands folded. But you can't hear any of its words. And actually, the Nera, it doesn't have any lips. Now that like I think of it. Writing glass panel. Yeah. So it's going to be nigh impossible to spy on. However, you can hear the topic of conversation. 
They're talking about Mirik. Is he dead? Oh no, but they laugh. They know. It's impossible for any of our scrying magic to reach him. And it's impossible to communicate with him. And the messenger saw him in a terrible battle. And the academy yet lives. You are the one who must. Well, actually, no, you wouldn't hear that part. I must determine if you survived. Yes, I understand. And again, it's very disorienting with half of the conversation, but it does not seem roll insight for me and Garnet only you because you're the only one who's actually listening in on this. Oh, 12. <clears throat> you can't tell if they know that Merrick's dead, but they do know about the fight. In fact, they know everything that you saw when the Herald infiltrated your dream in the dream version of that battle. Okay. And the Nira are not, they don't have, they're not a person, like a they, specific person. Right. They're they, they're native to the mirror plane. They are not clones of anybody. They're entities that dwell there. Hmm. Well, that's my bad, guys. Uh, they might have found out some shit through me. <laughs> Sorry. But they don't know enough, and that gives us curiosity that Sventisco can use for bait. And now you know for the future, if they try to get more information, to not let that happen, right? It also go where he usually hangs out at, which would be the Silent City. If but since they're doing scrying shit instead of just going there directly, it tells me they don't know how or it's difficult. But I mean, the Herald knew how. Well, it was Dream. The Herald should know how to get there through Dream. So why don't they just go look themselves? Who knows if he has the power to take other people there as well? well then we definitely have to go back to the Silent City. And, and just word. wait. But just wait for... To see who shows up looking for him. And what if the Herald shows up? I guess we already know who they're all working together, so... I mean, this does tie Kepesk into the larger Alexander plot. Mm-hmm. Previously, we weren't entirely sure. Maybe... Hmm, would Sventisco have a reasonable means of saying that perhaps they've spied on Garnet and found out something? I need to talk to you about the old dragons. Etc. To lure Kepask? Yeah. I always wanted to learn more about Untermaler. Wanted us to get into his office. Wanted us to. Wanted us oh. to get that knife. All the staff left for mm. something, and I slipped into Untermaler's office. But to get what? I mean, the knife is gone at this point, and that's what he really wanted the whole time. Mm. Garnet. As the party is discussing, still on the flying carpet, I will send word both to our contact abroad and those at home. If they have indeed slain the silver dragon, then it is certain. Is certain is transmitting all of this to the party obviously mm -hmm. what what is certain no idea flapping is ready <laughs> Athol starts writing a out a little note with the quill mm -hmm. what does the note say We have, take, we have 
performed observation in the refugee camp, brackets, don't worry, safely. Kepesk of the Faithful confirmed to be agent of Mirror Keeper. Holding position for observation, please advise. Okay. Ties it round the foot of the raven. Pacaw. Blah, 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 blah. And as the crow flies half a mile, a few minutes, like a minute, a couple of minutes, shouldn't take that long. I don't have an ideal target yet. There are several options. Whoever it is must be carefully chosen for vulnerability and impact. I don't think that's advisable. There's been too many interventions already. There's got to be somebody else we can pick. We already tried that. Yes. Yes, I will advise. Kepesk bows. The mirror ripples again. And then turns to exit the small chamber, gathering a few items, some quills, ink, knife, food, and heading back out. One more decision on anything you'd like to do before... L now gets word, and we proceed. Is it possible for a spider Buddha to follow as Capes goes out? Yeah. Well, Just you don't have the... Uh... <laughs> the spiders move pretty slowly, but it's definitely possible. Why don't you give like an okay. acrobatics but, checker? Go ahead. No, the, sp the spider got long strider from me. That's right. The spider's a speed demon. Okay. Roll a stealth Speedy check. Boy. Roll That's a terrifying. stealth check, too, right? That works. <laughs> Sweetie, um, swooty. Are we in, like, dim light? In Down there? Yeah. Uh, you, yourself? Uh, not necessarily. The spider? Absolutely. Yeah. So, like, his stealth roll would be in mm -hmm. advantage mode? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Dirty 20. Okay. Spider is able to follow along. Kepes is going back out to the main chamber and having conversations in Draconic with some of the other members of the Faithful. If I recall correctly, you still don't speak Draconic. Correct. Okay. Mantra does if you can, you know, just say the <laughs> words phonetically and yeah. Can you like telepathic? Wait, can Athor telepathic link me and Mason? Shut off, unfortunately, because no one calls. Mm hmm. Any like mental listen he can do? What if I just like kind of rehashed what was said in like the most? I, I got high charisma. Maybe I can just re, <laughs> re say what's being said. Yeah. You just like phonetically, you know, found it out. Might miss a few words. Oh, get pieces man. of it, surely. <laughs> give me, give me a flat intelligence check to see how well this goes. <laughs> so well. Dirty twenty one. Let's go. Okay. Um. Let's see. He is giving orders about patrol routes and infiltration. It seems like the faithful have people in every quarter of the refugee camp in disguise they're also helping to sort of raise these little neighborhood militias of Ocarthel dragon tribe folk in mutual self-defense and keeping track of where uh where wardens and wizards pass through the town when they're handing out supplies and such and where the bronthan loyalists who's loyal to brontha in the area who's a closet zalar worshiper who's a loud uh, loudly accusing the dragon tribes of harboring infernals where the fighting where, where the tension is worst after that whole incident that just happened with all the dragon tribe people coming out and 
blocking the way of the Bronthans. They're keeping a list of names of people all over the refugee camp and where they live and like their interactions with regards to that. So they have very up-to-date information at all times about the state of those interactions. Some of that lines up with what like real Kepesk would do, but then some of it mm -hmm. doesn't, right? Is that accurate? Yes, that is accurate. Okay. Kepesk would be tr tracking the movements of the Ioth Academy people and looking out for anybody who's bullying people from Ocarthal. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that tracks. And it's a lot of logistics, which, which it means it's going to take that long until Athelor receives a sending spell. Are you done with reconnaissance? Can you return? Should I come to you? Elna wants to know if we can go to her or if she should come to us. Uh, come to us? Yeah, might as well just come hang out. <laughs> she ain't we busy. We are you know? <laughs> at the edge of the sphere. Currently, oh, I'm counting syllables here. Currently. <laughs> 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 Too used to writing parodies. Currently the coordinates. continuing to observe. Come to us. All right. It's going to be a few more minutes until Elnau arrives. But she... Uh, and so you continue to listen to Kepesk. And I'll say that passively, this gives you a little bit more insight into the state of things in the refugee settlement. And uh, you sort of realize as you're listening in on this conversation, relaying to Mantra, who's translating, that most of the people in the refugee settlement, who again, some have lived here for a few generations, some have recently arrived, all sorts of different cultures that have, have all come from all over the place. Most of them are just trying to survive and they get very little news of the outside world and they're very afraid, especially given all the attacks that have happened. And so they're mostly just trying to keep their family safe, which means they're anybody who offers them a bit of safety tends to get a lot of sway over them. So there's a few people who are using that, whether it's like trying to manipulate or just trying to like, let's band together for mutual protection. But there's a lot of politicking, street level politicking going on in the camps and the faithful are very much on top of it. In a, in a city of people who are just trying to make their lives, there's small groups of people who are trying to push entire populations in one direction or another. And it's, this has probably been the state of things for a very long time. It's just particularly volatile at the moment. A few minutes later, Elnau flies down towards you under her own power. Her, she looks a little bit, her jimmies are rustled. Her hair is a little bit out of place. She's got the staff of an eye off. She just, you know, flies down, waves off a couple of wardens who move in to provide, you know, flight escort on either side and then makes space for herself with her very light bone, hollow bones and settles on the carpet. Okay. Kepesk. Tell me about it. Athlaw looks over to the person with her first hand experience. Oh, explains all. <laughs> Reca little recap a roo. Okay. Previously on IOF Academy. <laughs> hmm. I wish we could say let's monitor him and see what he learns and bring him in for interrogation, but. I think I agree. I think we just wipe him out as fast as possible. But it has to be quiet and it has to be clean. And Tamola? Uh, not, not small. <laughs> or quiet. Clean, though. Oh, mm. I can... Kind of smells. <laughs> hey, he's, his hygiene is immaculate. No, I, <laughs> I, I can take a small... Small group of Archmages. We'll see if he's got any wards against scrying in the uh, Maybe college. Maybe not you. Maybe not you. I'll see who's available. If you want something done right, you do it yourself. In uh, you take a few more lessons, the College of War, you'll realize this is what they call scry and die. 
but I can see to it. We call it poor delegation. I mean, <laughs> nothing like a little void born bomb <laughs> couldn't fix. Am I That's right? The exact opposite of quiet, quiet and clean. Thank you, Athelore. <laughs> we can't unleash creatures of the void into the refugee camp. It'll cause a panic and, and a mass casualty event. We only send those into places where every it's okay. if they kill everybody, it's okay. Well, if there's more than one mirror clone. They're not going to differentiate, Garnet. They're just going to devour everything that isn't that exists. So it stops existing. No fun. Oh. <laughs> Remember, you'll get to use them on Alex. I want to carpet bomb someone again. That was fun. If Mass you have murder, Garnet is showing. <laughs> no, hey, just... you two suggested it first this time. You leave her alone. One murder, one I singular I murder. I like easy plans, not ones where we send people outside of our safety dome. I just don't know if there's a lie that you could tell that would sufficiently lure him into the academy. He's never been here, right, Sventisco? She shakes her head emphatically. He's never been inside. All right, then doing that at this stage would probably play our hand too quickly it's best is to just give him no reason to believe that we that he suspected at all and then he just disappears kill him in dream we could disguise ourselves as for the kids john doing the relief mission for else have true sight santisco looks over at you and glares at the lore hey i'm not the one who was working with a terrorist Oh, the so, T word, huh? Back and forth. Sheesh. <laughs> there is no reason to implicate the people who are just trying to help others in any of this. It's uh, Elna says, and it seems like an unnecessary complication. Teleport in, kill him, teleport out. The dream angle, that is more the sage's specialty. And I, no, that's foolish of me. Of course, I wouldn't put her past it. Put her yes. past what? Well, I mean, the sage, to use those powers for an assassination. Uh -huh. That's That's entirely possible. The only risk is if the Herald knows to be watching. Because she would have to, but I suspect she could do it fast enough. Yes, that might be, that might be. I'll speak with her about it, Garnet. If it, we'll have a plan tonight. We will have a plan tonight. Now that we're aware of the threat, it's on our doorstep. I can think of absolutely no reason to, Juan. What? The, sen the sensor. The spell array. The detection mm -hmm. array. It just tripped. Oh. Uh, oh. It okay, was... this plan later then. That plan okay. now? Let's just go back and figure it out. Did you need it? Were you... Garnet, I can't leave you here at the edge of the sphere. Why? <laughs> because I can't, all right? Well, I think we've, well, we've scried on Kabesk enough for now. We know what we're going to do, right? It's either kill him by going in or kill him in dream, right? Well, the, the Archmages will come up with a plan for that. Now we need, I need to figure out what we just learned about Quan. The detection just tripped. This could be our first lead towards getting the book or finding mm -hmm. out where it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, Try and find no a way to delayed murder. <laughs> unsummon Una. Oh, well, they could just probably come back, even just hang out a bit longer, but without me. Right. You're fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Such a zippy little guy. Like it adds ten feet of speed. That probably doubles Dude, for a spider. That's horrible, <laughs> as, as previously pointed out. But no, Una can just creep out and then go back into bird form and <laughs> at maximum velocity. If you want to do that. Um... Or jump into a fire and... It, oh, no. That wouldn't work. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> Unsummoned. It collides explodes. you to underlie. Spider <laughs> seppuku in Minecraft. Whee! It's been nice working with you, Una. Now self-destruct. <laughs> Spider will self-destruct in two months. <laughs> Because it would this, take me a spell slot to reconjure his ass, right? Correct. So yeah, yeah if, he, if he just goes ahead and morphs, burp, roll a stealth check with advantage to sneak out of there. Let's try it. Seventeen. Yep, that's good enough. Scoodle -oodle 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 -oodle. What reason would they have to suspect a tiny little fast as fuck spider anyway? Right. Oh, I mean, this is the world of that. <laughs> like that bug in particular, kill it. So. <laughs> Bell now takes control of the carpet and flies back up towards the spire. Once again, wind whipping past all of your faces. Sventisco clearly very bothered by this. <laughs> and at being called somebody who works with terrorists. <laughs> I'm lucky. You fly back all the way to the spire and into that same conference room where everybody's been, this sort of unofficial war council has been meeting. And you land and Puabi, the master of transmutation, has on the table a wooden, you know what you'd put like a, like a trophy that has a wooden base with sort of those ridges uh, like on a it. pedestal kind of thing? Yeah, like a like round wooden pedestal at the with a mesh of gold and silver armature holding a hand. Quan's hand, just like in between them, almost touching it, but it's floating just between them. It shimmers with a little bit of light with preservation magic, preventing it from rotting. And between the armatures and gemstones on them, and points inlaid and carved into the board and gemstones inlaid there forms a complex three-dimensional pattern and a small silver bell at the end of it, which just ding, ding, ding. The sage is there, Untermaler is there, everybody is there as they walk in. And, uh... <laughs> The moment that you arrive, Untermaler looks around. Which one of you has the crystal ball? I think I'm technically carrying it, but I'm not attuned to it. Oh, well, neither is he, so that's not going to do him any good. <laughs> so... We can't very well use a mirror for this spell. Somebody fetch me a bowl of water. A silver bowl. It cared, a uh, warden runs out to go fetch something. And we'll come back I shortly. looks over to the party with the crystal like, who do we want to attune to this? I don't think I'm going to be very useful with it. With the bowl? Yes. Was it me? Are we still doing capacity oh, trying with that? Or are we I doing see. something else? I mean, I guess I'd be most familiar with Quan out of us, but yeah. well, we, we we know where. Uh, one sec, I'm checking my attunement slots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Quill. I think the chain is the chain Elven chain, or does it have special properties? I think it's Elven Chad. I think that. I don't think Elven Chain requires attunement. It's just a suit of really nice oh. chainmail. You're not attuned to the sticky wand. No, I've unchecked the sticky wand. Maybe I only have the one. Well then. Since... Un unless someone else wants it, I do not mind. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and attune to that? I. Guess so. All right. Like we can always just change for two minutes in an hour. So, yeah, I'll just go ahead and let you take care of that. It's it's been long enough downtime. While they are fetching all of that, the sage will stand beside you, gesture towards the hand. You are the one here who knew him best, if not specifically well. <laughs> 
Becky, if you can see him, use this and she'll point at the hand as your guide. Athel reaches out like, do I like, do I? You're going to need to touch it. Oh, I don't want to touch it. You have to touch it. (laughs) I really don't want to just slaps your hand on top of the bottle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the hand ends up on top of the dead, like oh no. <laughs> it's the <laughs> same hand on, on on the orb and okay. ponds it. I, I don't know how close a relationship you'd consider saving their life and being in the codex together. I'm gonna say that that is a middling. So it's not secondhand knowledge. You definitely knew, saved your life once. But if this was, say, um, hell, even Sventisco, you know better than Quan. Yeah. Or definitely any of your friends. So I'm going to put that at a flat zero. But you do have his hand, which is a minus 10 to this saving throw. Okay. I cast scrying on the one armed wonder. All right. I'm just going to see if there's anything else in here that would lock that. Nope. A 17 minus 10 for having a physical piece. And because you're using the crystal ball, the images swirl around and all of you are able to see this as the camera sort of zooms in Palantir style and then past the translucent layers of crystal into the heart of it. A metal scab spreads across the sands of the sun-swept land. Holes in the earth belch forth smoke, and the glow of a thousand fires emanate from them. You can hear the whir, click, and grinding of uncounted machines rising from an enormous, garish city of metal towers. Titanic metal arms covered in enormous glass lenses align as the sun moves, focusing its light into each other through a series of relays, all of them on armatures, shifting as the time of day goes by, as the sun sets, in order to continue focusing that light into a single enormous column that vanishes down into the maw of the earth. This is a place that you've only ever heard of, but have never gazed upon. This is Diphraxis, a city of the designers. They are the ones who created the iron butchers that slaughtered Garnus' father. They are the ones who serve Anachronis, the machine prince, the eschaton clock. The heart of this city, a series of metal cranes and towers covered with these complex optical apparatus. Sort of imagine like when you go to the the optometrist to get your eyes checked and there's just machines with all sorts of different lenses on them. That, except a lot bigger and more old school. The city itself sprawls outwards in all directions, an ugly, utilitarian thing. Just heaps and heaps of of shacks and squat, flat warehouses and factories belching forth astrid smoke. You can see people moving along the ground. You can see machines passing in and out of the earth, pulling up minerals and resources and smelting things down. And there are countless people downtrodden, focused on the ground, moving about the city, hauling things back and forth, many of whom are only partially mortal. Metal has replaced some of their flesh, much as Quan did to himself. The laborers, the underclass of this city, many of them have been modified to become more effective laborers. It is not in these chambers that you finally see Quan. Walking completely straight up, perfect posture, that same eerie smile when you all crashed in the same room and there was canoodling on the couch and everything, that all that, or scoodly pooping, it was scoodly pooping. Uh, No no canoodling around here. We're we're, we're a respectable show. Exactly, exactly. Degenerates. Uh, Quan always had that sort of faint, vague smile on his face. He still wears it now, but it seems more, more confident. 
more focused, more piercing. And the stitched up section of his neck that was once closed is now wide open and a mechanical eye whirs and glows within his throat. His teeth are bared, not in aggression, but just sort of almost frozen on his face. He's walking beside several iron butchers, lumbering up a sta of staircase, an enormous staircase, towards a pair of doors, probably 20 feet tall, made of solid iron, with arms on either side that reach out and <laughs> open in either direction. And as he steps in, you hear a voice. Designer six recognizes the entrance. Proceed. And he walks through the door, escorted by the iron butchers. And as your vision follows, it goes dark and goes out. Can I let go of it now? <laughs> Focus again. I feel like very squeamishly, mm -hmm. like squeezes it slightly, and then puts his hand to the ball again. Once again, focusing on Quan. The image swirls. Uh, it's like smoke within, just churning, but nothing is revealed. A low growl from the Minotaur. Diphraxis. Is this a place that we know where it is? Yes, you do know where it is. Uh, I'll, I'll show you on the actual map, but it is hundreds of miles to the south of Ioth Academy. And population? Uh, lots. Void vulnerable. <laughs> like hundreds, thousands, millions? Thousands, thousands. Definitely thousands. Probably in the tens of thousands. It is the largest designer city in the area, and it is on the edge of a place called Kara, the land of unbreakable earth, which is an enormous, uh, inhospitable salt flat that just spreads for hundreds of miles in all directions. It's a carpet bomb time. <laughs> <laughs> it it does seem like a viable carpet, carpet bomb time. That's yeah. a carpet bomb angle. <laughs> Ah, this d d stream is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> are, we, are we the terrorists? <laughs> are we the ones dropping no, bombs we're, on we're, cities? It's bro? freedom. We're about to liberate the hell out of their oil. America. <laughs> <laughs> so, the mood in the room is dark and grim. Untermaler mutters under his breath. Praxis. Why has he gone back to Defraxis? What's he doing there? Back there? Is that where he's from? El now nods. We have... He's not the only student to come from Defraxis or one of the designer cities. He is the only one we've seen relapse. Most of those who are freed and brought here in order to unlock their potential never want to go back, but it seems Quan was all too eager. How were they freed in the first place? Who, who scouted students from Defraxis? In times of old, we had far more of our mages scrying and seeking out and liberating students with arcane potential from across all the demonic imperiums. We have students here from Ithgos and Narzim, students who were liberated from Defraxis and the other cities. Um, I don't think there's any students right now who were pulled from a Ravener horde, but the point is, whatever others may say, tries not to look at Sventisco, we have always tried to aid those outs who languish under the Infernal Lash. It doesn't usually bite us this hard. Garnet, does your Infernal Studies reference Designer 6? Any that, specifics? That would be a history check. 
got a history check, I guess. Anybody uh, who's anybody who's studied uh, world studies, the infernals, anyone who would have a reason to know this can do a history check on designer oh. six. <gasps> oh. Natural 20. Get it, son. Wow. Okay. There was literally no reason you were supposed to know this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I speak infernal and well versed in the histories. Okay. Well, well, we'll start with the basics. So the designers are the rulers, like the, they're, they're called the designer cities, but only a small subset of its denizens are actually designers. They obviously seek to understand the design and to accelerate it. And they constantly compete with each other to see who best understands the massive cosmic calculations of Anachronist. They modify themselves to become more construct parts, more machine parts in order to become closer and understand the great eschaton clock. But they are constantly in competition with each other. And a small group of designers rules each designer city. And within each city, they're assigned a number. And the lower your number, the higher ranking you are. And that rank is based entirely on how well you understand the design. Because ostensibly, if you understand the design better, then you should be in charge so you can implement it. Oh, the numbers so like a level seven Scientologist. Exactly. So designer six, uh, designer one, would be the, the one in charge of the entire city of Defraxis. Designer six would be five steps down. You would also would, know with a natural twenty. Would I know if there are multiple people who can have the same designer number in a city, or is it no. one at each number? Every number is unique, but the numbers can change. Uh, and supposedly, it's based on who understands the design best. But they all take orders directly from Anachronis. So from time to time, Anachronis will shuffle the power balance, and everyone just says, "Well, I guess that's part of the design now," and that messes everybody up, and they all start scrambling to understand why they got reassigned in rank, so on and so forth. So what you just saw was Quan entering the abode of Designer 6. And because you rolled a natural 20 for no adequately explained reason, you don't know Designer 6's name because they forsake their names. That, that's not their name. Their name is Designer 6. Uh, perhaps there was a name at some point in the distant past, but that name has been forsaken at this point. But you do know that Designer 6 has been around for hundreds of years. Whatever species they were originally, they have prolonged their life by using alchemical and necromantic rituals. And their body is largely artificial. Only their brain remains. And uh, that brain is cased in a protective you know, jar, effectively, that controls this massive biomechanical monstrosity that it crawls around. Hmm. You also know that Designer 6 has changed rank many times, has gotten as high up as Designer 4, shuffled back down to Designer 6. And uh, given that has been around for several centuries, is determined to be Designer 1 of Defraxis. Every city has their own. So technically, this would be Defraxis 6, but within the city, they just say Designer 6. And this is the biggest Designer city, right, Defraxis? It's the biggest one nearby. There might be bigger ones. The world is vast. Okay. Uh, there is one up to the far, far northwest, Torqueus, uh, which was built into the side of a mountain. And it used to, actually before the Demonic Imperiums, it was inhabited and built by gnomes. Uh, but the designers sort of took over, dominated the entire place, and made it their own. It is built because above they the... they tormented them. Yes, exactly. Torqueus. What can we do anything with this information? Well, it's more than we had before. Okay, Quan is working with Alex. He's been he's in the designer city. Assuming he's still operating as part of Alexander's team and in accordance with the will of the Eschaton clock, uh, an, an emissary? An ambassador? Maintenance on whatever alliance they have. They had designer abominations down at that ambush. Yes. The, the, the machine prince is in league with all of them and would have contributed resources. 
they asking for more resources or something? It, we don't, we don't know. What can we do with this? Well, paying tribute or something? I don't know. Maybe. We need to use magic. We need to use divination magic right now while he's out of the city. We need to do everything that we can to see what we can learn about his intentions. It won't reveal the location of the book, but if we know why he's there, we may be able to get something from it. It is unwise for us to just drop into Defraxis and try to extract him. That would be, that would make what we were just talking about a moment ago, Garnet, by comparison, much, much more difficult. And yet this may be our only chance to capture and interrogate somebody who truly knows the location of the book. All right, and Grant. Like I said, incredibly dangerous. But the book remaining in Alexander's hands is just as dangerous. Okay. Elle now looks up at everybody gathered around, sort of asserting her authority and says, this is what we're going to do. Go through the archives, grab everything you can with divination magic. We are keeping a constant eye. The next time this thing rings, the moment he walks out of that, because that's a private sanctum. Wherever Designer Six dwells, that is shielded by magic. The moment he walks out, that bell is going to ring again. And when it does, we have scrolls of divination. We have legend lore, contact other plane. I don't care. Everything that we can to get answers. Don't ask about the book. We know the book is off limits. Everything else that we can, we find out. Based on that, we're going to start putting together a team to perform an extraction if we have to. We don't go unless we know more, but I want to be able on a moment's notice. If we think we can grab him, we do. But the initial ping didn't start until Quan was already in Defraxis or almost there, right? Or The entire city is not concealed by any sort of ward. Only certain parts of it. So however he traveled there, oh, it must have been a teleportation circle. He must have used mm -hmm. a teleportation circle to go there. Otherwise, unless for some reason the book is in Defraxis. Hmm. I guess right. they could be anywhere, really. Yes. Yes, that is that is the trouble. But Quan knows. Even if we don't... He must be mind-shielded. Alexander's no fool. He wouldn't send him out unmind-shielded. No, I think that we have to... We have to be prepared to perform an extraction. Because if we can get him... Somewhere safe, somewhere under our power, we can break any spells or wards and extract the information however we have to. If that happens, she looks across at the students, at the three of you. Mm, kind of, Santisco, only kind of. <laughs> if that happens, I may call upon you to go with us. You're his classmates. Some of you knew him. It will depend on the specifics of the mission. Any questions? What specifics of the mission will it depend on? The angle of trying to have people who know him try to lure him or? We don't know. All we know is he's in Defraxis and he's under guard and he, the area he's currently in is warded. We have to wait until he emerges to cast spells that will give us more information. So I don't know what mm -hmm. variables there are right now, Mason. I just need you all to be ready. Okay. And lore-wise, like, no one's mm -hmm. ever tried... This is like Mordor where no one's, like, kind of went there and fucked with it. Like, it's just a no-go zone. No one's tried to start a war there or kill him. No, well, so the Archmages... Also probably have... <laughs> Brontha is so busy with Ith Ghosts, who serves Uzul, that they've never sent like a full task force down there. The Dune Riders and some of the other groups who dwell down there, uh, Pevom's family was linked to the Dune Riders. They know the secrets of how to get through that salt waste, so they usually just avoid the designers and go around them. The Archmages you have at this school have killed gods. They can do it. The problem is it's... 
you know, it's one thing to just show up and blow the crap out of a single incredibly powerful monster. It's another thing to show up and be outnumbered. Because one of the major advantages you had over Miric was you outnumbered him. So this isn't a don't even attempt it. This is a very dangerous mission. Like they would never send you kids alone to do this. They they would believe that's suicide. And they have a big protect, protective dome as well, right? The Dark Academy does. Diphraxis doesn't, but they have monsters and magic everywhere. They've got like security, magical security systems hanging from the streets and stuff like that. It's possible to go. It's just a high risk operation. And there's some people there who like, yeah, El now thinks she could probably one on one any of them, but doesn't want to try her luck. You know, it's not one of those things where it's like, yeah, I'll dust them every, every single time. It's like, let's not take that fight if we don't have to. Like, you don't want to go toe to toe against a designer unless things are in your favor, even if you think you'll win. Damn, if only we didn't piss off the Thunder God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Damn. that That'd was not our fault. Um, I have it. a question about teleportation circles. Mm -hmm. Do they remain visible and opaque when they're not in use? Permanent teleportation circles, I mean, you can put a cloth over them. You can throw a rug over them. Um, but most of the time, they do have to be pretty well engraved into the ground. Why do you ask? If I, if I scried on the first spot where I managed to find Quan mm -hmm. and just looked behind us, maybe it's in the, in the metal, and we can just read the coordinates. <laughs> uh, Untermaller actually snorts out a chuckle. That is worth trying. Okay. Athlop puts his hand back on the ball. Mm -hmm. oh. Touches a single finger to the hand. <laughs> well, I mean, the hand doesn't really apply here because you're not trying to see... The hand literally shows you Quan. If you're trying to see something else, oh, okay. that doesn't exactly apply. Yeah, just trying to find the first contact we made with Quan mm -hmm. when he came out of the circle and placing okay, the sensor there. You choose a location you have seen before as the target of this spell. When you do, the sensor appears at that location and doesn't move. Okay. You touch the sphere again and it swirls and inside of it you see that Juan was leaving a huge metal tower. That further up is part of the armature that controls the various uh, solar collection lenses. A huge metal tower with a door in it, and it is surrounded by battlements and machines kind of watching it. Uh, the doors can be, they have a huge bar that locks down, like a huge steel bar that locks down upon them. And two enormous golems on either side that lift it and close it. When Quan was leaving, it was open. Now that Quan has left, it's shut. It leads to a causeway, a system of different metal bridges, one of which pretty closely leads to the residence of Designer 6. You don't see the teleportation circle, you just see the doors that he emerged from. Weird question, because I don't understand the rules here. Yeah, fire away. If it's a place I've seen before, mm -hmm. can I just fucking hop? Like how you move <laughs> in VR? Uh, how long does it take to cast scrying? I want that's I wonder. Well, it takes ten minutes to cast scrying, but I imagine it's up to ten minutes. Yeah, read as written. I think that like you could take ten minutes of, of looking and then take ten minutes to recast the spell and just it'd be VR hopping, but very very slow. But I think it's theoretically I mean, possible. If they get away, I could just VR hop through the gate because it's just a bar, right? Like it's not entirely opaque. But you've never seen inside of it. You can't hop. No, it, it it's a closed, solid doors with a huge, like, you know, when they say bar the door, bar the gate. Ah, One of those. Okay. It's not a portcullis. So unless you see the door open, you won't be able to hop in there. But you could just like wait, you know, <laughs> just take yeah. 10 minute intervals of just watching it. Athelord describes the plan to the party, mm -hmm. asking if 
he should just wait here and do that. Karn, I was not listening and thinking about something completely different. <laughs> How does this factor into the carpet bombing, Athalon? <laughs> <laughs> when can I do the bombing? Hell <laughs> <laughs> no. Stops and pulls Garnet aside to explain that while the designers themselves deserve to be torn particle from particle, the many, many souls who live a hellish existence under their rule do not. Mm. It, it, there's a very... <laughs> <laughs> mm, you're all guilty. Machine prince lovers, mm, you're all ugly. You're all dying. <laughs> <laughs> You're all ugly. You're, You're all, all ugly. dying. Are we not... baddies? Well, now, I'm not saying that the scales won't ever tip in that direction, but it does need to be a little bit more targeted for it to be worthwhile. Besides, they may have the means to deal with this. And a door opens two ways. I still think there's... I don't know why, I just keep thinking there's a way to break through to Alex. It's just... I'm stupid. Well, we don't even have to do this. I, if, if Alex would just listen to me. Do you really think that you can... And as the words emerge from her mouth, the floor shudders just a little bit. And there's a resounding boom. And every archmage in the chamber sighs and rolls their eyes and picks up their magic weapons and just says, What now? Ooh. The what was that for? Scrying. The, ah. the use of a scrying in the old breaks. Mm -hmm. And as everybody gathers themselves up, resigns to deal with whatever new crisis just popped up, we are going to go to a short break. When we come back, possibly chaos, possibly negotiation with Alexander, uh, possible war crimes, we'll find out. Don't go anywhere. Yay! <laughs>